Hello, everybody, and welcome to, to, whoa, 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 okay, all right, and that just happened. Anyways, welcome to today's video where I'm going to be continuing my series of going over the Unity ECS samples. I'm kind of moving along into the physics samples, and in today's video specifically, I'm going to be talking about some of the physics properties. So first I'll be going over into some of the motion properties. And so those are things like mass, velocity, damping, gravity factor, center of mass, and the inertia tensor. Now I'll have links to the specific time codes for each of these properties down in the description below. Anyways, before I get into the video, I'd just like to say that I'm currently building up my Discord community. You can use the link down in the description to go ahead and join that. Uh, currently looking for ECS and DOTS developers where we can kind of talk about some of these new technologies and concepts coming to the Unity game engine. So we can all just kind of help each other out with problems that we're experiencing and really just help us get a better understanding of these systems. By the way, if you did find this video helpful, I'd really appreciate if you hit that like button. Also feel free to subscribe to the channel for lots more new features coming to Unity. Of course, if you have any questions for me or suggestions for future videos, feel free to leave those down in the comment section below. So anyways, let's jump right into it. So this is um, kind of the first scene of the motion properties. So this is the mass scene. And this is kind of supposed to demonstrate how the mass properties work. I think the idea here was um, these things were supposed to balance out, but um, they don't really work perfectly. Um, but here I can demonstrate kind of the difference between using the new Unity Physics package and the Havoc Unity Physics. So again, um, if you watched my last video, you'll remember that we have this physics settings here. So we can click on that. And under the physics step, we can change the simulation type. So we have options for no physics, Unity Physics, and Havoc Physics. So currently it's using the Unity Physics. So if I just hit play, you'll see what happens there. Basically, everything just kind of topples over eventually. Now, if we use the Havoc physics, it uh, is a little bit different. You'll see that um, all the little spheres that kind of they kind of like wobbled at the beginning um, and then all just kind of rolled away. And then you see that the boxes here, these are actually all staying completely still. Now, you remember, we can actually grab these little boxes and then kind of start messing with the whole simulation here. But anyways, this just kind of demonstrates how the mass works. So for example, if we go to the spheres and here's the four kilogram sphere, uh, you'll see that the mass property, this is where we set the mass property, it's on the physics body. So maybe say if we change the mass of this to like 40 and now we hit play, you see that it pretty much just launches all the spheres on the other side. And then similarly, if we turn the um, mass property down to one on that side, we can just hit play and you'll see that uh, basically just knocks everything over that way. And again, that was using the Havoc physics. So of course we can go over to Unity physics and see how things react uh, just a little bit differently here. Um, so you see that we do get kind of um, slightly different simulations between using the Unity physics and the Havoc physics. In general, the Unity physics is going to be a little bit quicker, whereas the Havoc physics is going to be uh, more realistic. All right, so the next motion property we're gonna be going into is velocity. So I'll hit play and you can see what happens here. So basically what's going on is there are three cubes. So we have this first cube, um, which just has an uh, initial velocity that shoots it straight up into the air and you'll see it falls straight down. The second one over, this one just has an angular velocity, so you'll notice that it doesn't shoot up or anything like that, um, but the angular velocity just causes it to spin forward, and you'll see that it hits the ground and kind of rolls a little bit. And then lastly, this cube on the end here, this one has both linear velocity and angular velocity set, and then so that, that basically causes it to fly up and start spinning. So again, let me just hit play and demonstrate that. So you can see that's kind of basically what happens. Now, if we go into each of these cubes here, we can see actually where we set these properties. So it's on our physics body. We have these two properties for initial linear velocity and initial angular velocity. So you see this first one um, just has a initial linear velocity of 10 in the y direction, which is why it just shoots straight up. Now we have the angular velocity where you'll see the initial angular velocity is set to negative 36 in the x direction. And then lastly, we have the linear and angular, which kind of shoots it in the X and Z directions and also puts an X and Y spin on it. 
So one last time, just hit that and that's basically what happens. All right, so the next scene demonstrates linear and angular damping. This is basically the force to slow it down either linearly or angularly. So basically we just have these five cubes and what's gonna happen is they're all gonna start with an initial angular velocity of five, five, five across every axis and they're not gonna have any initial linear velocity, they're just gonna drop straight down. Now you'll see basically these are the values that we've set for the linear and angular velocity. So you'll see this one is at uh, 60 in the linear and six in the angular. And we just set these on the physics body. So here's where we set the linear damping and angular damping. So a higher number means there's gonna be more damping and then a lower number means there's gonna be less damping. So basically what's gonna happen is these cubes kind of more over to the left. These ones are going to be slowed down much more as opposed to the ones on the right. So go ahead and hit play to demonstrate that. And so you can see that pretty much like these first two they stop spinning almost right away and they take a long time to slowly drop down to the floor one more time i'll play that for you and you can kind of see what's happening with these uh different damping properties so you can start to play around with these to mess around with how quickly things can slow down just um, when there's no force being applied to them other than gravity all right so the next scene that we have we're going to be going over the gravity factor now, basically what's going on here is we have this cube with a gravity factor set to zero. This cube up here has a gravity factor of set to positive one, and this one down here has a gravity factor of negative one. Um, so you can see when we click on these, again in the physics body, we just have this gravity factor of one. This one is a gravity factor of zero, and the third cube is a gravity factor of negative one. So when I hit play, that's basically what happens. You'll see that um, the one with the gravity factor of one that drops straight down, the one with a gravity factor of negative one drops, air quotes, drops up to the ceiling. And the one with a gravity factor of zero basically just kind of hovers right in the middle. And because both these cubes hit it when it was, when they're passing it, we kind of get this little spin factor on it here. So let me play that for you one more time. You'll see that's how we can kind of modify that. Of course, if we wanted, we could go to one of these cubes and maybe make the gravity factor of it like 10. So this cube is going to drop really quickly now. So you see that thing just dropped like a freaking rock. And um, because there's actually more force going downward on it, now you see that this other cube is kind of floating away. So I bet you if we went to this negative one and put a negative force of 10 on it, Let's see what happens here. So we hit play and now this thing in the middle is just spinning like crazy. So yeah, you can kind of play around with the gravity factor and have fun with that. All right, so the next one that I'm going to be demonstrating is the center of mass. So if we actually go into play mode, I just have it paused right here. Um, in the physics settings, we have a selection for draw mass properties and that's how we can basically show um, how we've kind of offset the mass for these particular objects. So you'll see with the capsule here, we've basically just kind of dropped the mass downwards. And then with the cube, we've um, kind of moved the mass property outside of here. And we've also applied kind of a rotation onto it. So the orientation of the mass property is just a little bit different. Now, if we resume playing here, you'll see basically what happens now. Um, we kind of have this kind of like wobble effect because we've basically just been messing with the center of gravity. Now the capsule can kind of wobble around its round bottom there. And then you see that we actually have this cube and it is kind of moving around on that one corner. And again, if I'm just kind of in the editor mode here, you can see how these um, center of gravity objects basically affect these here. So again, we're not moving the colliders or anything. Um, the colliders are still as normal and that's why they can still kind of collide with the ground here But we just changed the center of mass so we can kind of change the balance point of how the the physics objects actually Interact in our world. So again, these are just more physics properties on the physics body So we just have the uh, center of mass here We've just set it to negative 1.5 for the capsule 
And then if we go over to the cube, you'll see that we've changed it to uh, negative one in the X, negative one in the Y, and positive one in the Z direction. And then we also have orientation set. So this is where we can actually set that orientation offset for the center of mass. And in order to see these properties, you just need to make sure the override default mass distribution uh, box is checked here. This one is a little bit more complicated, but is the inertia tensor. And so the inertia tensor value is basically a value that we can set to make it more or less difficult to rotate across a certain axis. So a larger number means it's going to be harder to rotate than a smaller number. Now, before I get into it, I'm just gonna kind of show you off what happens here when we hit play. So basically everything drops down and then you see you know, kind of some weird things are happening. It's a lot similar to the other one where some of these objects are kind of wobbling around a little bit. So anyways, if we go to this first cube capsule pair here, uh, you'll see that we have the override default mass distribution box unchecked. So this is basically the uh, kind of default properties and this is the default that we can compare with. The next one over, this has large spherical tensor. And so basically for both of these objects here, we've set the inertia tensor to 333 in all directions directions. So that just basically makes it uh, much larger in all directions. And so it makes it more difficult to rotate on every axis. The next one that we have for the cube capsule pair here is the large low and flat tensor. So basically we've set that to five in the X direction, 9.5 in the Y and 0.5 in the Z direction. So if I kind of hit pause and play, we actually get a good visual representation of this might be kind of hard to see across the screen but um, download this and play around with it yourself again i'll have a link to that in the description but you see that we kind of have this large flat box here that's um, actually sitting below the capsule here and for some reason it's not drawing the mass properties for these three objects um, but basically this one has kind of a similar large low and flat tensor going on. And again, that's going to make it easy to rotate in certain directions and a little bit more difficult to rotate in other directions. And in the final cube capsule pair, we have locked motion space X and Z axes. And so on the capsule, we're using the default mass distribution here. Um, but on the cube, we have overridden these values to give it an orientation offset as well as uh, shrink the inertia tensor down a little bit. And you'll notice that also on both of these objects here, the cube and the capsule, we have the set inertia inverse behavior script. And so this is where we can actually um, set which axes we want to lock the movement in, or I guess this would be the rotation rather. So I'll pop open the script and just kind of show you what it has here. You notice normally we would do kind of an I convert game object to entity where we'd have the uh, convert function. But you see there is this comment up at the top saying I convert game object to entity pipeline is called before the physics body and shape conversion systems. This means there would be no physics mass component to tweak when the convert is called. Instead, convert is called from the physics samples conversion system instead. Now here's the physics samples conversion system. Basically we have an on update and it looks for anything with this set inertia inverse behavior script. And then it actually calls that convert method. And it does that for a couple of the things which um, we'll get to in later demos. But anyways, all it's doing is if it has this lock X, lock Y or lock Z box checked, then it just sets the um, inverse inertia at that particular position for that access to zero. So I'll go ahead and play it one more time. And again, you'll see that's basically what happens. So again, the inertia tensor is a little bit more of an advanced concept. So you typically won't need to worry about it um, unless you know kind of what you're messing with. So anyways, that is going to wrap up this video where I kind of went over some of the motion properties on the physics objects. Of course, this is part of the series on these dot sample projects provided to us by Unity, where I just kind of go over some of the basics of DOS to kind of get us all up to speed. Again, be sure to use the link in the description to join the Discord community where you can talk about uh, some of the things that you found in this video. Maybe if you're still kind of confused on things, that'd be a good place to go ask questions and get help and maybe share some knowledge if you have any additional knowledge to add to the conversation. Anyways, if you enjoyed this video, I really appreciate it if you hit that like button. Also feel free to subscribe to the channel for lots of more videos on new features coming to the Unity game engine. Of course, if you have any questions or suggestions for future videos, feel free to leave those down in the comments section below. Anyways, I hope you have a fantastic rest of your day and I'll see you in the next one.